So as we get started today, this video is divided into chapters. If you wanna skip at any point, just a look at the sliding bar underneath the plating window and you can see the chapters to skip ahead. Welcome back to the Crochet Chronicles with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com an absolute beginner level crochet hat using a chunky level that means it's a thick yarn and I'm gonna be teaching you how to hold the yarn, the hook today and get you started on this project. We're gonna be working step by step through it, this project and I'm also gonna be giving you some advice that it's not in the pattern because that's what tutorials are all about. Giving that advice that'll help you go further. So I'm going to show you how to open your Ogo next and we're gonna go to another generic video and the Ogo is a round shape product like this and you will see it will look like that and I'll show you how to open it and then I'll come back and give you some advice in order to get started. But for now let's open this Ogo first. So let's open our Ogo and what you wanna do is put your hands in behind and see this hole? You wanna just use your fingers and just push those flaps up and the top will peel and you're just gonna pull back and it is sticky right in the midpoint and you're just gonna pull and there is your Ogo. One thing that you should know is that the colors are equal length all the way around but they don't always start at the exact same spot. So a part of the color may be over on the other part of, of the side. So we wanna take it out just like that, put that aside and you wanna pull like this and this will reveal a plastic tie that is in between. So take in your scissors and that will open it and then grab that tie and pull and that will take that out. So that's what's holding it as a ring. So you can see that this color here is also on this side. So when you start your idea you may want to start at a particular point if you want the entire color sequence. So if you wanted to start with this color and not this color all you have to do is that you just have to reach in with your fingertips and just pull like this and just kind of hold the colors and you'll see that the ogles will split apart like this. So if you wanna do color play that's exactly how you do it and there is the color transition change right there. You can snip it and then begin at this point and therefore you have a fresh color of this and when this comes back into play later you can bring it back around and have the Ogo finish. So the way that this is wrapped um, is really quite fabulous but it also allows you to change color. So if you wanna change any order of anything just separate it and then just use it and they recommend that you put it into a plastic uh, Ziploc bag if you want to but if you crochet as fast as I do I just get a salad bowl. Just put all five pieces into the salad bowl and that's something that I would do. So in the video presentation you just saw I showed you how to crack open the Ogo so that you can do color play. So if you would like the band to be a solid color what you would want to do is crack the Ogo, so just separate it so that you have a fresh color to work with and therefore you can have a band that's all one color instead of a mix. If you look at the model you can tell that it's a mixed and so this is a great way in order to do that. So um, that's a great option and that's what I'd recommend. But before we get here, before we make the band let's learn how to crochet. So let's uh, get our yarn and our hook and let's talk about that. So let's talk about your hook. Now the hook sizes are all, are all different sizes. This is the shaft of the hook. So the indentation that you see here is the throat and then that's the head. So the head, the throat and the shaft. The shaft is what is controlling the size of the stitch. So generally speaking the thicker the yarn the bigger the shaft. So then you move up on the hook size and those are usually recommended in the pattern. But you also find those on the ball bands as well. So it gives you a recommended hook size. So because I've been crocheting a long time we have a six millimeter, a five and a half, a five, a four and a half, a four, and a three and a half and so you'll notice that it will go down. So if you're from the US then what you'll have is a letter designation instead of an actual millimeters and so what we have here is you'll see it on the hook. So because I'm from Canada my hooks are labeled here with the metric of three and a half millimeter but if you're from the US then it will be an F, a G, H, I and J and so on and so on. It keeps going up in the letter form all the way to Z. So what we have here is that the hook size here is determined uh, by the letter designation but it's also determined by the ball band itself. And so let's take a quick look at the ball band and then we can determine which hook size is recommended for that but that doesn't mean that the pattern is calling for the same hook size. So let's take a look at the ball band. 
So this here is Bernat Baby Blanket Sparkle. You can see that it's very thick in comparison to other yarns out there. And so when you turn over this you will see the designations of the recommended sizes. For the crochet hook it's an eight millimeter and that's a USL slash 11. So eight millimeter or an L. And then this gives us the gauge information which you can learn in another video at another time. So this size yarn is recommending that. Then when you look at other kinds of yarns out there here, this is Red Heart Scrubby Sparkle and you will see that this is uh, five and a half millimeter, a size I crochet hook is the recommendation. But of course on the patterns is it may be different because the designer may be having something else in mind. So let's take a look at a technical pattern and let's cross compare that. So here on the pattern it's recommending a US J10. That's, so it's a J. And for us in the metric system it's a six millimeter. So usually they put the metric in a bracket when they're doing these kind of instructions. So whenever you see a difference of inches or centimeters then you will see that kind of information. So they got four inches and in the brackets is the metric. We also have a number here which is five. This is telling us the thickness of the yarn. This is not plies. People think it's a five ply. It's not. It's the thickness. So the thicker the yarn the higher this designation. So this, this can be zero all the way to seven. Seven being the jumbo and absolute thickest level of yarn. Zero being a pretty much thread. So let's uh, continue with the hooks. So welcome to your crochet hook and this is a size J. This is recommended for the pattern we're working with today. And the, let, and the colors here help me to just quickly pick out what it is but each manufacturer has their own colors. So you're going to notice the ergonomic is here and so this ergonomic allows you to hold it easier. So this here has been designed for your hands where if you just used something like a pencil and it has no ergonomics on it. The pencil can rotate any which way. You'll never have the orientation because there's nothing to stop your hand from rotating it. So the flat spot here, so I'd recommend you want one with a flat spot. Hopefully nothing here on the flat spot so it doesn't interfere with your, your thumb. Some manufacturers put the designation of the lettering or the or metric here on the thumb and in time actually that kind of just adds an extra pressure to your thumb and it can be quite uncomfortable. So if you're gonna crochet with the pencil method just like so, you're going to notice in time that you're going to have pain within your wrist area here because the action is going to be constantly moving your wrist in different directions in order to get it. Okay, so when uh, crochet first came to be it was a very dainty uh, yarn craft and it looked really dainty to be able to do it like this. But in time what's happened is that many people have shifted to use the butter knife method where instead of the action of your hand being bent like this it's more straight and then you can just crochet this way. You will notice that I use in crochet I rotate the hook a lot so I'm not exaggerating the motion of the hook at all where this way it can cause just that action of your constant wrist going up and down. So you have to decide what's gonna work for you. So if you wanna learn to crochet this way I'm not your host for that because I didn't learn that way and I feel it's more comfortable to do that. I did try to learn but it just is too uncomfortable for me. So you have to decide whether you're gonna butter knife it or you're going to pencil it and if you're penciling it you need to find a different host at this time. Okay so now that we have decided what we're going to do if you're gonna carry on with me in the butter knife method welcome and we're now going to play with the yarn. So usually in crochet you have to start with a knot in order for it to get to secure. So essentially crochet is a sense of tying knots and you're using the hook to do it. The difference in knitting versus crochet is that when you crochet you create a stitch and finish a stitch. When you knit you open the stitches up and it's on the knitting needles and the stitches stay open all the time. So if you absolutely drop a stitch things can unravel. Where here with crochet when you start a stitch you finish a stitch and if you make a mistake you can simply pull it out and restart again without a lot of trouble. So we need to create a slip knot to begin. So let's learn how to do a slip knot first. There are many ways of doing a slip knot. I'm again going to teach you the way that my mom taught me. So you're gonna take the end of the strand and I'll demonstrate this several times. Notice that there's no knots on this strand. And I want you to use your index finger or sorry your pointed finger and we're going to be using this motion. Pretend that it's a diving board so you're going to pretend that somebody is leaping off. So we're gonna say a frog. So the way that I teach this is that the frog is, has to play leapfrog and then go up over the finger. So take this strand 
and come on the inside of your hand and rotate around like this. I will demonstrate that again. So coming in. And one last time. If you're ready to go, let's go. So I want you to just grab the other strand and just pull down like this. And use your three fingers and close. So pull down and use your three fingers to close. What you're doing is you're providing tension so that this is not loose. I want you to play the game of leapfrog now. This frog has to jump over this frog and land on the diving board before going off. So we're going to take this strand and leapfrog over I'll demonstrate this several times and then you take the new frog that's behind and he is so excited to jump that he jumps over and jumps over top of the diving board and that is your beginning knot right there. Okay, so let me show you again. So wrapping your finger and you close. Leapfrog up over the frog. This one's so excited to play when he jumps over. It jumps way too far, jumps off the diving board and that is your beginning knot. I'll demonstrate it two more times. And now that your slip knot is made, I want you to place it down on the table or where the surface that you have. And now we're gonna talk about using your hands to be able to feed the yarn to the hook. So if you're right handed, technically you probably will be doing right handed crochet. If you're left, you could be doing the other way and some people even though they're right handed, they crochet left and vice versa. So today is whatever video has been listed whether it's right hand or left hand. So what we have here is that we want to use your other hand to feed the yarn to the hook. So both hands are in motion when you're doing crochet. I find most of the pain of crochet in long term, like if you're doing a long term stint like hours and hours, it's usually in the feeding hand not in the hook hand which is kind of shocking. But you'll see why that's going to be in just a few moments. So what I want you to do is just hold your hand down and I want you to examine the gap between your fingers. Do you see any air? Do you see any surface going through? And if you're wearing a ring, the ring can separate your hands so that you have gapping spaces. You may have arthritis and other uh, sections of your hand that may not close all the way. Mine happens to be but um, also you can adjust your fingers so that you can get that. So you may have to move up your pinky in order to get that to have a close and etc. So you may have to adjust your hand. What our goal is and I'm just gonna take this here is that I wanna feed the hand. The hand. I wanna feed between the pinky and this area here. So the yarn is going to travel op over top of the three fingers. So just grabbing the strand come like this. Okay, I'm just gonna hold so you can see that and follow. Okay, so you see what I'm saying? So just when you grab it, it's gonna go over top like this. Now let's talk about feeding the actual yarn so it slides. So whenever I need more yarn, I have to open my pinky so that I can just let the yarn just come from the yarn ball. 
if I don't want the more yarn but I want this to be tighter I will close my pinky and therefore there will be tension there. Okay? So if I want more yarn open my pinky and if I don't close my pinky. Do you wanna try that? So hold it down. Tension, open, no tension. Some people because of their hand shapes or their finger shapes they actually go over top of their uh, finger so that they actually can um, wrap it around and go like that. But in time you may have a lot of um, you may actually get some yarn burn as a result of doing something like that. People do it but you'll have to decide if that's going to work for you. In my case I don't need to do that. So now what we want to do is that we wanna do a flamenco dancer. And a flamenco dancer if you know what those clicky thing they're using two fingers to hold. And so you'll use your driving finger, the middle finger and your thumb to hold. And this finger helps once in a while but it, it's using the tension of the strand so that you can crochet better. So this finger is gonna be flying all over the place and the pinky is going to be moving in and out on here in the back. So let's relate this back to yarn. So what I want you to do is that I want you to flamenco dancer boom 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 and hold the knot of your starting. So boom 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 just hold the knot. Okay, ready to go? And what I want you to do is with your other hand grab your crochet hook and put it into the hole. Then the strand that is going to the yarn ball I want you to pull. And when you pull don't pull it so that you're tying it to the, <laughs> the hook. You, you want it to be able to slide nice and easy and you should be able to get your hook out really quite easily and be able to insert your hook back in. So out and in. In and out. And then we're going to position the yarn in the feeding hand next. So let's put the yarn into this hand. So just drag it between the pinky and your ring finger and when you drag it just close your close it a little bit so it's got a little bit of tension and rotate your hand so that your middle finger and your thumb are doing the flamenco dancer on the knot. So just pull and flamenco dancer the knot. So now we're in position to be able to crochet. But we have to talk about this finger next. So let's talk about what's going on with this finger. So this finger here is really important. When you have to stick your hook into something the finger acts as a guiding behind the stitch but when you need the, uh, the yarn to change tension this finger is going up and down like this and you'll it'll naturally happen for you in time. So whenever you have to stick your hook in you may find this finger is the backdrop of the stitch be able to do the magic and you will lift it back off and then do your magic. So this finger is going there. So if this is too loose then what I do is I have to lift my finger up to provide the tension and if there's too much tension, if, there, if it's uh, too loose I want to just keep on moving my hand back so that it gets like there and if it's too tight what I do is that you use that finger to push and it feeds more yarn onto this, this area. This is your working area inside of your crochet. It's between your two fingers. 
So now we're going to start and create our first stitch and it's gonna be called the chain. And I'm going to be teaching you my way but I'm also gonna use technical words so I'll try to balance this too. So to begin to crochet what we're going to do is that we're going to learn how to do the chain. It's called yarning over and in the actual abbreviations it's Y-O-H yarn over hook. So you don't wanna go in and grab it and pull it this way because it'll be very hard for you to crochet. What you want to do is that you wanna go down and scoop the yarn and in order to get the hook out of this hole here, the hook has to turn upside down. That's why this flat area is so important and you wanna turn the hook upside down so that it will stay grabbed onto the yarn and you'll be able to pull through. The reason for that is that these I, here look like a teardrop. In order to get your hook out, you have to turn it upside down so that you can push that loop up and be able to pull out. Do you see that? So if it's not, you can't get it out any other way. So when you go to create the chain, you're going to scoop up, turn upside down, and noticing I'm not moving my wrist, I'm just moving my, the rotation and you pull through. And you wanna slide this to the shaft. So currently you're in the throat. So the shaft is what's dictating the size of the stitch. You can let go of the, of the knot that you were grabbing onto and grab the new chain that you just created, flamenco dancer it and just grab. So loop upside down. Non-technically I refer to this as row boating. So I'm gonna row and scoop and pull. So it's yarn over hook, scoop and pull. And I want you to just keep practicing with me. Let me know how you're doing in the comments as too. Okay, so you just row boat. And just keep creating chains. You're not, uh, we're gonna pull this back out. It's all also called frogging to rip it, rip it. We're gonna rip it out. So it's gonna, we're gonna frog this later. So it's not a waste of yarn. And keep row boating until you can get the size of your chain to be pretty consistent. So when you start crocheting this chain is gonna be your, your nightmare. And in time you'll relax. Nothing's gonna happen if you let it go. It doesn't run away. So don't be too like, you don't need to be. Just relax and let that yarn just glide through your fingers and feel the joy of the stitching journey. So we'll scoop and through. And let's do the next 10. So let me count it back. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, and one, and zero. So it looks pretty consistent, right? So I've been crocheting a long time, so over 30 years, so I have the consistency. So if you're not consistent, you can keep practicing and not just uh, put pause on this video. Keep practicing a little bit because now I'm going to be demonstrating something new. So keep on going until you're satisfied and don't frog this so don't rip it out and we're just going to teach you the basics of single crochet which is a basic stitch to get yourself started which is in this project. Okay if you're ready to go I'm gonna teach you a method that I prefer to use and this is a method that my mom did not teach me to use but I use it most often in most of the videos. So what I want to do is that I wanna crochet along this working chain. Now you can't crochet in the first loop here because that loop is coming out of there. So in instructions it will say single crochet second chain from the hook. This is the first chain that you see. So the hook is not the chain. This is the first chain and then this is the second chain. So whenever we're doing this in single crochet it's usually second chain from the hook but it's assigned in the pattern on which chain to choose. So it could be up to the fifth chain or sixth chain. It depends on the stitch that you're gonna be using. 
So let's just say second chain from the hook. So we have one and two and do you see that on your sample at home? One and two and once you identify the second one I want you to rotate this chain and it will reveal the back loop or back hump of the chain which is right here. It looks like the back of the chain looks like a serpent spine with all those uh, with all those lumps. So just think about the Loch Ness Monster. So count back. So one, two and rotate and get the back hump of that one. Now to single crochet what you're going to do is that you're going to stick your hook into the back loop only. And noticing that I'm using my finger as a stabilizer in behind so that I can push it through. Okay, so just the back loop only going in and we yarn over. So we scoop and pull through. Okay, so just scoop and just pull through that chain loop. And I wanna shift it so it ends up on the shaft so that the sizing of the loops stay consistent. So I'll show you again. So the back loop, yarn over and pull it through one loop only and then pull through two. That's a single crochet that whole step. So let's show you again. Let's move on to the next one. So now that you did the first back loop the rest of the chain will stay upside down and each one of those bumps is a, is a stitch. So there, 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 there. Do you see it? So I move to the next one. So going in. So noticing that I use my finger as a stabilizer and I yarn over and I pull through. Move it down to the shaft and then yarn over and pull through two. Let's keep on going. So going in, scoop. So that's yarning over, pull through two. And I want you to work down that chain you just created. So single crochet is in so many things that it's a basic stitch that we all need to know. Noticing that I can let go of the project at any time. It doesn't run away. So you don't have to be worried about holding on to dear life. This entire hat is made of single crochet. There's a little bit of technique involved and we can touch base as we hit the hat and this is the basic stitch that you need to know for this project. So I'm gonna show you something while we're doing that. Keep playing and you can just watch the screen when you're, when you get a chance. So I'm gonna change the hook to something thicker and you will notice that the hook size determines the size of the stitch. So this is an eight millimeter size L and that was recommended in that Bernat Sparkle. So, so do you see the height difference? So it drastically changes the project when you're using different size hooks. And if, if something's wrong just release the hook and pull it the number of stitches that you need and then continue your journey. So let's continue all the way to the chain.
and if you're ready to move on the video chapters are here in the video that you can move on to the next part of this project. And you can speed up as fast as you wanna go. Remember, enjoy the stitching journey. That's the whole point of crochet. It's not about the speed. People like um, gravitate towards like, oh my God, somebody's so fast. It's not about the speed. It's whether you're enjoying the hobby. And the Zen time and the meditation that can happen with crochet is usually done when you find your own rhythm and your own speed. So there's nobody that is a better person than you based on speed. So if you're thinking that way, just get that out of your head. And your goal is just to find your Zen. So find your stitching journey. And now that I'm at the end of the chain, I'm going to move on and show you how to do another row of single crochet. So let's do that next. So once you're on the end of a row of anything, what you can do is just turn the project itself, leaving your hook and you wanna begin again. So whenever you start a line of crochet, generally speaking, you have to chain a set number. And that what the chain is doing is it's building up the stitch work so that it can get to a certain height before going across. In this case, it's single crochet. So we're gonna chain one. And in single crochet, where the chain one came out of is the first stitch. In other stitches, the first stitch is actually the next one over. But in single crochet, it's the same stitch where this is coming out of. And so you're just going to now pay attention and each one of these here, do you see the two? That's a full stitch. So when you stick your hook underneath both of those, that is the full stitch. So you see one strand and the second strand. Do you see that? So if you play with either of those strands separately, it's a different stitch entirely. And we will be doing that in this video, uh, in the, later on in this tutorial. But for now, we've already chained one. So when you go into the first one, stick it right through. So both of the strands are on top. Pull through and pull through two. And then you move to the next one. And do you see it? So going in pull through, pull through two and in, pull through, pull through two. So in, yarn over and pull through two. In, yarn over, pull through two. So what happens if I go in and I pull through this one and this one at the same time? That's a different stitch altogether. That's called the slip stitch. We will be doing that in this project as well. So just, but for now, just concentrate on just getting your consistency of your stitch work. Enjoy the journey. So in, pull through, pull through two. So yarn over, pull through, pull through two. So I'm in very informal tutorial host. I don't use a lot of technical language. Um, I'm a very basic learner. I, had, I struggled as a kid and I'm teaching you the way that my mom would be teaching me. So it's my mom's um, attitude and voice through me directly to you in order to teach me how to crochet as a child or as a new person. And she was my guiding rock as a child learning how to crochet and doing a lot of life lessons. So you, eventually you're going to come to the end of the party which is the end of the line and you're just going to go right into the very last one which is right here. So some people don't think that's a stitch and so they end up with a triangle blanket but that is a stitch and you're going to go right in. So if you want to practice even more you, you can turn your chain and continue to go. So just chain one and whip yourself across. So just single crochet yourself across. But right now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to demonstrate another technique which we will be using in today's tutorial. And this is the technique that will be used in the band. I am going to demonstrate each one of the parts of the project but we're just doing the basics for now. 
So I'm gonna start with a fresh line and I'm gonna demonstrate what that is. So in the project you're going to notice that the brim has a three dimensional look to it and that's using single crochet on the back loop and I'm gonna demonstrate what that is. So when you do that you have elastic properties to your band when you go to do that. So to start the row you're going to chain one. So we already know that and I already explained to you what these two stra uh, strands are. So using both that would create a stitch. If you use the strand that is closest to you, so let's just get a pencil. So if you use this strand which is closest to you, that's called the front loop and the one that's further away from you is the back loop and we wanna play within the back loop only. So instead of grabbing both of the strands like this, we're just gonna dive over top and just only get the back loop in. So do you see it? It's like splitting the stitch in half. So from this perspective you're diving into the back. Yarn over and pull through two. You're still single crocheting but you're only grabbing half of what the stitch is. So if you were doing the front loops then you would just scoop up and grab the front loop only but we're not doing that in today's project but that would be a front loop if you were to do it like that. And you notice that it changed the look when you did that. So we wanna stay within the back loops only. So continue to dive and only get the back loop. And you'll notice that this will create a line on the front side of your project. And so you just work down your chain just as a practice. And what we're doing technically now is considered the brim. It's not the brim because we haven't started the pattern yet but this is what the brim would look like. So you'll see on the back that it has an indentation now which it didn't before and that's because the back loops create this texture in the stitch. So let's just say that I went all the way down. Put me on pause if you wanna go all the way down and I'm gonna turn my work and that's where you can start me next. So for those that are continuing the brim, you just chain up one and continue with the back loop only. Like that. And so this is then throwing the texture in the opposite direction which is going to create the wavy elastic shaping of the brim. And now you can really kind of see it starting to happen, right? So the front loops and the back loops are important. Some people don't like doing it but it is what it is, right? The stitch that I think people don't like the most if you're actually interested is called the treble where you wrap the hook several times before doing the stitch. It's a very tall stitch. It's not the tallest out there but it's uh, one that kind of bothers people. It has its purpose. So you back loop all the way to the end and you can see that it just went from a flat surface to a texture surface by using the back loops. So I'm gonna demonstrate another technique that we will be using in today's video. So if you wanted to keep practicing that and if not I'm gonna show you another technique which is going to help you to know when you're doing the top of the hat when you do the redu reduction of stitches. Before we get to the reduction of stitches I'm gonna teach you one more stitch called the half double crochet. So this stitch I'm about to teach you is the next size up from a single crochet. So you'll learn this technique in the brim. The rest of the hat is considered half double crochet. Now in half double crochet sometimes the beginning chain counts as a stitch and sometimes it doesn't. In this pattern it will not count. And the reason for that is that chaining of two doesn't always look accurate if that's considered a stitch. So what they want you to do is just chain two. So one and two. So do that and just hold with me for a second. And because they're considering that as not a stitch 
the very first one where the chain two is coming out of is your first stitch. So if this was considered the first stitch, the next stitch right here would be your next one. But they're saying it does not count as a stitch and you can see that in the pattern. So to do the half double crochet, we have to row boat. So we have to collect the strand first and then going into the stitch. So in this one here, we are going to be using both of the strands. So we're not gonna use the front or the back loop and we're gonna go collect this the strand and go right in. So it's still on the hook and you will see that you have three strands or sorry, three loops on the hook currently and you're gonna yarn over and pick up and pull through once only and now you have three loops. I'll, I'll demonstrate this several times. And in half double crochet, you're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops to finish. And you'll notice that the stitch is taller than the last stitches we were working with. So let's do the next one. So yarn over and going into the same, uh, go into the next stitch, yarn over and then pull through three loops. Yarn over, next stitch, pull through, pull through three loops. I'll keep on doing this. How you making out? Are you doing good? Leave us some com leave me a comment if how you're doing on your crochet today. It helps me to know how to teach better. Even if you're not liking me or whatever, it helps me to grow. So I learn even by negative reviews. So you're gonna come into your last one, and I want to teach you how to turn and go up going up the next row. So when you're ready, just put me on pause, but if you're ready to keep keep me going. And I'm gonna demonstrate how to go back and what I want to really show you is how to finish the end of a row of something like this, especially with half double crochet. So we know that the first chain two does not count as a stitch. So that means that the very first one is directly in line with where that's coming out of. And you're going to wrap and then start there and then go into all the stitches across. So keep practicing with me. It's very rare for me to teach a tutorial right from the basic like this. It's assumed that by the time you start working on projects that you have the basic understanding and there's so many um, tutorials out there including in our collection of, of videos on how to do the basics. So my goal today is to teach you this project and teach you all the steps that you need to know before we actually begin. And of course you can use the video uh, con our chapters to be able to fast forward me ahead as well if you're, if you know what you're doing. So what you want to do is that you wanna identify the last stitch in the row. And when chain two does not count, you gotta make sure that you're not adding an extra chain or an extra stitch. So I have only one stitch left. So remember the chain two does not count as one, so the last one is right here. And you can always count and check and so you'll notice that it has an indentation that bulges out a little bit. That's normal. And that's what you're gonna do. So we do have one more technique to show you and I'm gonna be demonstrating on how to do making these stitches become reduced by making them turn uh, two stitches into one. So if you're ready to learn that, keep me going. If not, just keep me on pause now. So I'm gonna be demonstrating on how to do a half double crochet two together. So what we want to do is a reduction of stitches so that we can get to the top of the hat. So let's just start a row 
and we're going to start a row and chain two and that does not count as a stitch and let's just double or half double crochet the first stitch just to get yourself started. So now it say it states in the pattern or the demonstration right now is that these two stitches are going to become a half double crochet together. So when we finish what we're about to do there will only be one stitch that will span over the two. So we're gonna reduce by one stitch. To do that you're going to yarn over and you're gonna go into your first stitch and I'll demonstrate this several times. You're going to pull through and hold that on your hook. Just move it down the shaft. You're then going to go into the second one and you can do multiples in a row but in this case for this pattern it's only twos. So you're gonna yarn over again and go into the very next one that's empty and yarn over, pull through and you will have five loops on your hook. And once you have all five there that you can see you're done. So you're gonna yarn over and just pull through all five of those loops and now you've got two that just spanned into one top. So it became a half double crochet two together. So let's do this again. So let's put the next two together. So yarning over and going into the stitch, the next one that's free and pull through and hold it. Shift it down that shaft to get the right size then go into the next one. So yarn over and in, pull through and then pull through everything. So let's try again. So next one free, pull through, hold, go to the next one, yarn over and in, pull through. Do you see five loops? I sure do. So pull through all of them. So yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. I'm missing a loop. Do you see that it should be five? So I must have not wrapped something properly. So try again. You have to learn when to identify your own mistakes. So going into the next one, so yarn over and through and I see five again. As a tutorial host I'm not perfect. I do make mistakes and my mouth and my hands don't always do the same thing. I do get called out on it but it's it's fair game for me. <laughs> it's a fair analysis when people call me out on when my hands don't match my mouth. So I don't do any voice recordings after the fact. I, I'm teaching in real time and I'm wearing my microphone and I'm sitting here talking to you as I'm crocheting. And the pattern that I'm looking at is just right here that you cannot see off camera and I'm just kind of glancing at that a lot when I teach. So this is a yarning over uh, technique and this here is half double crochet two together and do you see how it's pulling in? So that when you do in the top of the hat that will pull in to have that look. So now I think that's it. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to begin working on the project. We're starting at the ribbing of the hat and we're gonna come back to that uh, sample that I showed you at the very beginning of today's tutorial and that's where we're gonna start our journey. So this is not a waste of yarn unless you want to um, keep it for whatever reason but save it. Save the yarn. So just pull everything out. This is called frogging. So to rip it, rip it. And what you're going to do if you wanna save this yarn just pull it out and just rewrap it. When you go to wrap to a ball though don't tight uh, wrap it really tightly. Keep it nice and loose and therefore you won't wreck the tension of the yarn. Okay so let's begin to do our project next. So at the beginning of this broadcast I had you separate your ogo and I had white in front of my ogo here and this color was in the front here. So it was this color and then the white. So because the ogo the way that it's done is that the last one here and the first one was white. So I knew that the these colors here are not full meaning that it's not the full length. So what I decided to do is that I pulled the white out and I separated it and I started with the salmon color completely. So at the beginning of it when I started it you can see that there's a little bit of a white fleck there and that was the starting of the white here that I cut. And so what I want to do is that I wanna use one whole color just for the band itself. And when you do the band you have it slightly stretched to about 22 inches and therefore you can have a solid color band. 
I'm also going to do something different that's not in this pattern and I'm calling it color play. So every fifth round I'm going to be changing the color. So we're gonna do five uh, rounds of one color, five rounds of another, five rounds of another and then I'm gonna save the last color then for the pom pom. So I'm going to be cycling through all of the colors so that I have that here. In the particular model that we have is that and this there's nothing wrong with that but what they've done is that they've gone from the one part of the Yogo and they just let the Yogo go and just proceed as is. So if you would like to do color play I'm gonna be demonstrating that too and so you'll learn a new technique on how to change your yarn colors. So we have to teach how to do the brim first and that's gonna be our step number one. So in projects like this what I do ahead of time is that I prepare so then I can continue to film at the same time and then when I do sample so I'm gonna be starting off with blue but I'm gonna be coming back to the sample and I'm gonna carry it along. I'm gonna be giving you some advice today that's not in the pattern as well. So when we go to do this. So let's begin and we're gonna start with creating the brim and grab your crochet hook and whatever color you're deciding to use for your brim and we're gonna begin to do that next. The next lesson I wanna teach you is that I want you to grab a piece of strand about yay long. It's not very long, maybe about seven, eight inches. And what you wanna do is just leave that off to the side and we're gonna be using that to help us to do this brim. And we wanna grab this. So we're gonna start right from scratch again. We're not gonna go as slow as we did in the very beginning. And we're gonna start. So let's create our slip knot by using our leapfrog method. I've already gone through the slow motion of this already and insert your hook and position the yarn into your hand. And what I want to do is that I want to create a chaining of 11. So the one that is on the hook never counts as one. So because this disappears. So we're gonna start in row boat and we're gonna do 11 only. So we're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And this is your starting and we're gonna start then row number one that is on the pattern. So it's called first row and let's begin to do that. In row number one we're gonna get ourselves established and we're gonna go second chain from the hook like I explained to you before. So you count back. So there's one and there's two. Turn it over and get the back hump of the second chain and you're going to single crochet in the back hump going all the way across. Because you're going second chain from the hook you're only gonna end up with ten stitches at the end of this row. And that's because you single crocheted in the second chain from the hook so you've eliminated one of the chains out. So that's why it goes from 11 chains down to 10 stitches. And you're just gonna work your way across your chain. to the end of your chain and we're gonna count our stitches to make sure. Technically I wouldn't but I'm doing it because it's a beginner level. This is your very last stitch. Here it's called the last chain. And then you can just pull on that and you wanna count and make sure that there's ten. So to count you can count from the back of the hook. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And so if you have ten you're ready for step number two. Before moving on what I want you to do that strand that I had you cut then just I want you to just to slide it into a piece of a strand that is on this side of the project. Okay so I don't wanna see the, the hook popping through. And I wanna take that strand and I wanna pull that through. And then pull through two strands through that one loop and that'll hold it. Did you see how I did that? Just make sure one more time. So once you pull through just put both strands over the loop and pull through. 
this is gonna be considered the right side of the work. This is not on the pattern, but this is my own technique to tell you. And so whenever you see this side, it's the right side. And whenever you see the other side, it's the wrong side. So in crochet, it's right side and wrong side. So front and back, but it's always called the right side and the wrong side. And I'll tell you why that matters in a bit. So let's put our hook back in and let's move to step number two, row number two and begin. So turn your work and let's begin row number two. In row number two, what we have to do is that we have to chain one and in the back loop only, we're gonna single crochet all the ten that are here. So starting in the first one, remember those, those two strands, you're going to go to the one that's furthest away from you. And you're going to single crochet. So I've already demonstrated how to do this before. So you're going to single crochet on the back loop only. So what side of the project am I looking at if the stitch marker, which that's what this is called, is facing away from me? That's right, I'm looking at the wrong side. So I'm looking at the back of the project. And the reason why that matters is that when you go and do this band, if you attach it right, then it'll look very consistent and you'll have a hard time telling where you started and stopped the band. And if you wanna verify, you can count your stitches. So count it back from the hook. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So you're going to repeat this step over and over and over until you're approximately 22 inches and you're finishing on the wrong side of the work. So let's just continue. I'll show you two more rows. So when I chain one, I'm going into the back loop across. So what side am I looking at if the stitch marker is facing me? That's right, it's the right side of the work. So if you're doing 22 inches long and you have to finish on the wrong side of the work, which side is the stitch marker going to be on when I do the very last row of the 22 inch mark? it should be on the wrong side. So you wanna do 22 inches finishing on the wrong side. So I just finished and I'm looking at the good side, so the right side, so this is not where I need to finish. I need to finish when I go across and I'm still looking at the back of the project. So chaining up one. So what we have to do is that we have to go to 22 inches, slightly stretched, and that will take you literally through the complete color of one of your, your colors on your Ogo. So try and do that. So if you're, if that's important for you to keep your band the same color, then do that. And so you wanna go 22 inches and you wanna finish on the wrong side. So if I'm done my 22 inches and I'm measuring it, this should be facing down because this is the wrong side and then you're gonna take your measuring tape. And this is where I'm gonna pick you up on the real project and we're gonna be starting the real hat from this point. So continue along until 22 inches slightly stretched. So back to the regular band I'm here. So what you wanna do is you wanna take your tape measure and measure and you see that it's 20 inches. That's because I haven't stretched it. So I wanna slightly stretch it and take a new measurement and it's approximately gonna be 22 inches. Okay, so if you go way too big then it's gonna be too loose for you. And what you wanna do is you wanna finish on the wrong side. So you can see that the stitch marker that I applied here is facing down. So I'm looking at the wrong side and this is where I finished. And so this is where I'm going to pick it up on the pattern. So before we finish this section here, we have to join it and form the tube shape here. So because this is the, the sides coming together, I want to Call is I want to do what it's called as a slip stitch. So let me bring it in a little closer so you can see. And what I wanna do is that I wanna come into the very first of this one here. So just slip your hook through. And I want you to yarn over and pull through and through. And what this is doing is it's locking this as the round shape of the hat and you can get rid of that stitch marker when you're ready. But what I wanna do now is that I wanna finish this yarn and start a brand new color for when I go around the rim for the first time. So to do that, you wanna trim your yarn a, a length enough that you can get it, but I've also trimmed it so it's before the new color starts. 
and I wanna put that hook through and pull. This locks it onto itself but you're not done. You need to use a tapestry needle to hide this into position. So we know that the good side of the work is the side with the stitch marker so I wanna favor the wrong side of the work for this. We're going to sew this together. So I'm going to go in the loops. So I'm gonna go with the loop on this side and then the loop on this side. And I'm just gonna pull through and then I'm gonna jump to the next loop going down Don't be afraid to pull it tight. And this is making the brim closed. So some people like doing their brims so they do them in circles. This technique is great. Of course if it falls off then just deal with it. The worst thing in crochet you can ever do to yourself is get upset if it's not working out. Just keep your calm, crochet on they say. And once you have it secured, you're gonna turn it over and you wanna drag that through the work itself. Okay, so I just wanna drag it through and I'm dragging it on the underside of the project. So if I turn this over right now, I should never see that needle and I don't. So dragging it through and then dragging it back in the direction from which it just came. And ideally if you drag it back and forth a total of three times then it will never follow it on you. So if you get really small like that what you can do, that's the whole point of these tutorials, is stick your needle partially in so that it, the needle becomes shorter. I'm trying to teach this from a perspective where um, you don't always think ahead. So you can stick it through the needle when the needle's shorter and then just dragging it through. Okay, so it's been in and out three times. And then what I want to do is that the starting strand that we started with, which is right here, is that we wanna drag it through the project a total of three times as well. And again favoring the back side of the band. Same area. So just one and I have more yarn to work with on that one. It's already been attached with the slip knot if you recall but this just makes it sure that especially if you're giving it away that you will never have a, a tail coming out. And then as soon as you're back and forth three times cut it and then you have a nice fresh band to work with and you can see which is the good side and what is the, the wrong side. So the front side or the right side and the wrong side. So we're now gonna continue in the pattern and we're going to begin our next coloring and we're gonna have a nice fresh color to begin. So let's begin working in the rounds. So we know that this is the stitch marker. Okay and we're gonna pull this out and we're gonna do something else with that now. So pull that out. We know that this is the good side of the work. You'll always see that there's a little bit of imperfection on the other side here where you did the joining. So you'll always be able to tell where you started and stopped technically as a crocheter. So at that point where you join them I want you to fold it there and just lay it down like this. 
and I want you to put your stitch marker using your crochet hook at the halfway point on the other side of that fold. And I'm gonna teach you a technique to help you to avoid obsessive counting. So this is where we joined and then this is the halfway point. So our goal in the first round is to get the number of stitches we need to get so that it's perfectly round. So there's a total of 54 stitches that are all the way around this thing. So because I marked the halfway point, so it, this is where we joined, I need to get 27 stitches before, in this side of the hat to the, to the stitch marker and 27 stitches on the other side. If you decide not to do that, what's gonna happen is that you have to equally space the 54 stitches so you can get partially the way around and you've run out of stitches so you can't actually get around or you've gotten all the way around and you still gotta slam in more stitches and there's no more space. So by doing this, this helps you to be able to um, get your counts a lot easier. So if you're going wrong and you're at this part and you're, for example, let's say you're at 20 stitches and you're already here and you have to be at 27, it means that you're going too fast and adding the stitches too uh, too quickly or yeah too quickly you're jumping too quick. If you're for example getting to 27 stitches and you're here and you still have all this space it means that you're going too slow. So this just gives you an indication on how to get the best balance so that the hat remains in balance. So what I want you to do is grabbing your new color and we're going to start with the slip knot and we're going to begin right at the at the join and that's where we're gonna start working in the rounds. So let's begin working in the rounds. So I want you to create a slip knot. We talked about this. It's the diving board with the leapfrog. And we're gonna stick our hook in. So now that it's on the hook, I want you to go approximately where the joint is and when I go into this, I always wanna make sure that there's enough strands holding this to the brim. So I'm going to go right where the joint is and I'm gonna go in. Try to get two strands of yarn to be sitting on top of the hook. And we're going to join this. So we're just gonna yarn over and pull through and through and that's a slip stitch if you recall. Now, this straggler here, this loose end, I want you to put on top of the line and we're gonna crochet right over top of it so it becomes hidden. And what I want to do is that I wanna equally space 27 stitches between here and the stitch marker and 27 from the stitch marker back to where we are with a total of 54. So let's put the yarn in our hand and we're gonna chain one. Now this stitch that I'm currently in, the, I haven't single crocheted yet so I'm gonna do that one. It's my first one and you just start counting your stitches. So single crochet, so we have one. So just shift a little bit next to probably about there. You have to guess and you're gonna do the next one. And this will be number two. And shifting to the next section is three and four, five. See how I'm going right up over top of that? I'm hiding that right in. So we have six, seven, eight, nine. And once you covered it enough, you let it fall to the back. We have 10. I'm looking for the stitch marker to judge where I am. So I'm at 10, 11, and 12, 13. See how it looks different? So I've not, I've not grabbed it in the, the right area. So pull out and try again. So 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 
and 20 and I still have to get 7 more stitches before I get here. So I got 20 so I'm gonna do 21 22, 23, 24, 25, 26 and 27. Now look at that. Now I've been crocheting a long time to make that possible in a one stretch and you might wanna double count that just to make sure and so you just start counting right from where you started. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 45, 26 and 27. So once you get to the stitch marker just let that just go in behind and start fresh again and do 1 through 27 again. So we have 1 and this will help you keep count. So 2, Three, four, five, six. I'm gonna try that one again. See how it looks slightly different. So six, uh, so six. seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 and I still have to get 7 more in before it here. So 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26 and 27. Now before you join it what I want you to do is go back and count your stitches. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 45, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 6, 4, 7, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53 and 54. There should only be 54 so I know my count is right so I can move on. So to finish the round you're just going to go into the top of the first single crochet. This is called the slip stitch join. So you're just gonna yarn over, pull through and through and that will close off your round. And now we're going to begin and we're going to start doing with half double crochets for the remaining of the project. So we're now going to begin half double crochets for the remaining of the project. So single crochets are done and that includes doing the half double crochet two together. So every fifth row is going to be a color. So one through five will be this color and then I'm gonna show you how to change the color to do the next five rounds. And what we have to do is that we have to continue what we're about to do until the whole project measures a total of seven inches and the seven inches is from down here all the way to where it is before you start doing any kind of reduction of the shapes. So to do the half double crochet this is round number two and all remaining until it's seven inches tall and if you just wanna let your ogo go and just keep on going until seven inches that's up to you but I am doing color play as I mentioned. So what I want to do is chain two and in the same one coming straight on down we're going to half double crochet so wrap the hook and coming in and pull through and pull through all three. We learned this in the beginning of this, today's tutorial. So the chaining of two doesn't count as a stitch, it's just a builder. So starting in the next one and we're no longer doing any kind of back looping. You're just half double crocheting. 
So if you wanna check once in a while to make sure that you have only 54 stitches in a round, you can do so. But if you're confident, you don't need to. But if you think it's getting bigger, then you obviously may wanna double check. So you wanna half double crochet yourself all the way around. So with these Ogos, the color combinations are all, I feel like they're endless. So you can buy like the same ball coloring and just start at a different spot and you have a different uh, color sequence and it could feel like a completely different hat. So what I wanna do is that I'm gonna meet you at the end of this round. So how I do my tutorials is that I give you a set of instructions. I show you a little bit of it. I usually don't show this much but I show you a little bit and I tell you to join me at the, at the next milestone, at the next step and that's what we're gonna do. So I'll show you where to finish the round and I'll be right back in just a second. So this is round number two. So I'm coming up all the way around. How many stitches do I have left over? I'm not done the round but how many stitches are left? Is it one or is it two? The answer is one. This one is the last one. This one here is part of that chain two. That's not a stitch. So people when they absolutely grow something they actually use that. So you wanna come into your very last one, half double crochet and you wanna join it to the top of the first half double crochet now at this chain two. So the top of that half double crochet and pull it tight and in hats, in crochet, if you go in a continuous circle like we are, the slip stitch will travel up on an angle. That's normal. So if yours is on an angle, it means you're doing something right. How you stop that though is that you turn the hat around and you go in the opposite direction back the other way to get the seam line to go straight. But we're not doing that in today's project. So we're gonna start another round. So just chain two and right where you've done the join is your first stitch straight on down and you're gonna half double crochet. So what I need you to do is that you need to half double crochet around and around until you get seven inches from the base to the, the when you're ready. So there should be a total of seven inches that you can count. But what I'm going to do for you is that I'm going to meet you w after the fifth round of this color and show you how to get rid of this color and introduce a new color so that you can do what is called this color play. And we're gonna move into the Ogo into the next color sequence and whatever color you would like to play with when you're separating out your Ogo and that's what we're gonna, that's where I'm gonna meet you next. So please just continue going around doing your half double crochets and me, uh, either meet me at the seven inch mark or I'm gonna be at the, at the, the fifth row to show you how to change colors and that's what I'm gonna be doing next. So I'll be right back. So I'm coming up to the end of the fifth round for this color and this is where I wanna end this color. It's still not seven inches but I'm changing the color every, after the end of every fifth round. So I wanna slip stitch to the beginning and this is where I wanna end this color. So to do that, I'm going to just snip the yarn long enough so that I can get a tapestry needle through it and I'm gonna pull through to lock it like that. And then the best way to do this is that you can weave it in but the best way if, especially if you're truly wearing it is that you'll wanna put in a tapestry needle um, to be able to get it to go. So this is the outside of the hat. So turn it so you can see the inside of the hat and just drag it through some of the stitch work that is here on the inside. So if you turn it around you should not see that needle popping through. And go back. So once, the secret is three times if you haven't figured that out yet. So it's three, that's the second time and the third time is a charm on the inside of the hat. Therefore this color will never fall out on you. You'll never have tails popping out of your work. And what I want to do is go back to my Ogo and I wanna progress to the next color and just lay this down and let's take a look at the Ogo and where we are and let's determine that. So next. on the Ogo, this is where I am for this color. So what I wanna do is just put my fingers in between and I wanna pull this out until I see the new color popping through. And I wanna trim it at that mark. And you can use this for something else in the future, maybe pom-poms or whatever and uh, um, don't be scared to throw this out if, you, if there's just not enough to work with for something else. 
there's no harm in that. Just don't tell anybody because they get upset about it. <laughs> so I wanna grab the new part of the Yogo and that's what we're gonna begin and we're gonna do the next five rounds of just half double crochet and let's bring back our project. So let's bring you back closer so you can see what's going on. If it were me and I were you, what I would do, see this where we started? I would start thinking about coming straight up in order to keep this kind of on the one side of the hat or you can start, uh, start exactly where you stopped before. So if you wanted to do that, it's right here. So this is where you did the join. So I'm gonna just do that just for sake of tutorial reasons. Create a slip knot and you wanna join it exactly where you did that join. And pull through. And then just lay this down on top of the line like I showed you with when we did the brim. And chain two does not count as a stitch and then begin half double crochet in that same stitch. And what you're going to do is just do and uh, you wanna get to seven inches eventually. So I'm st only gonna do five rounds of this color and I may hit the seven inch mark before then. But we'll have to determine that, right? So get your tape measure, keep it handy and you just take your measuring tape and just measure and once it's seven inches it's done uh, as far as before we do the reduction. So continue to half double crochet around and around and this is how you'll do it. To keep this on the inside so it's trapped and once you have it long enough on the underside you can just trim that as well and that'll be out of your way. And if you wanna throw it, throw it through a tapestry needle for extra security you can do that as well. So I'll be back in just a moment. So when I crochet in front of the TV what I do is I keep a tape measure handy and I have a little table that sits on top of my lap, a little lap table and what I'll do is I'll just keep an eye on this. So I lay this down on the t table and I just kinda keep an eye and then once in a while I just kinda look at it and just like boom check it seven or if not. So you can see that I still have a little bit of way to go and that's how I determine it. So I keep the tape measure handy at all times. So I'll be back in a moment and I will show you the reduction and I think I'll hit my seven inch mark um, in this color frame as well. So I'll be back in just a moment. Have another tip for you. See this here? This is the chain two. We joined it here. So don't think because we started a new color it can give the illusion that you have an extra stitch and you don't. So this is not a stitch. This is part of that joint. So when you pull it together with the first one make sure it's nice and tight to kind of pull that. Don't be scared to pull on it and then just do that. So don't uh, accidentally add an extra stitch and you can count around as well and make sure that there's 54 and then before moving on. So that's the only thing about changing colors that it can give the illusion um, of accidentally adding an extra stitch. So I'll be back in just a moment. So right now I've only got three rounds done of this yellow so I can decide to do something. I can do the next two rounds of being yellow but I only have five rounds left altogether from this point and I have seven inches here from the bottom of the brim to the top here so I know that I'm good. So I'm gonna decide to do something different. I know I only have five rounds left and so I'm going to end this color here. So remember Ogo is about color play. So you can end colors anywhere you want to. You could have done stripes if you want to as long as you know how to end and start new yarn. And so what I'm going to do is the last five rounds I'm going to progress into the yoga into more of a green color to do the very top peak. And again what you wanna do is you wanna secure any loose ends that you have before moving on. So you can do all your loose ends at the end. Some people do that and then they get really upset with themselves that they have a lot of loose ends. I'm a person that I like to kind of take care of it as I go. So then when I'm at least finish my project I'm actually finished finished instead of having to worry about all the fine, fine detail. So that's something that you have to decide what kind of crochet you're going to be leaving to the end or, or continuing along. Now if you went over top of the straggler like I did you can throw it through a tapestry needle just it's already trapped there anyway but for extra security you can just put it through tapestry you know and just take it back in the direction from which you just came. Okay and that kind of gets us stuck on to itself. Don't pull it too tight. And then we're gonna do the last five rounds of doing shaping the top. We're gonna progress on our ogo. So in our ogo we're just gonna grab it up, separate the color back out and again you can keep this color for another time. 
you can do it like kind of a random hat in the future. Trim it where it changes and then save that for something else. So let's continue and we're gonna go shaping of the top of the hat next. We're now going to shape the top of the hat. Now the top of the hat has to be shaped in a way that it doesn't just collapse and turns flat. We have to get that nice iconic curve of a hat. So right where the last one you did the join, you, this is where you wanna start and you wanna pull through and chain two and we're going to um, half double crochet in each of the next four stitches. So this is considered one. So we're going to go into the first one. So this is one and then we do the next one. So it's two. The next one is three. Next one's four. And we're going to do a two together uh, half double crochet or half double crochet two together. So over the next two stitches I showed you at the beginning of this tutorial. So you wrap the hook going into the next stitch. Noticing that I'm still trapping and trapping that and I pull through and then I wanna use the next one. So wrap and go into the next one and pull through and there's five loops on the hook. So you're gonna yarn over pull through all five. So that's gonna be our repeat pattern going around this thing. So let's begin again. So starting in the next one, you're gonna do the next four in a row. So we have one, two, three, and four. And then the next one is a two together half double crochet. So using the next two, yarn over into the next one, pull through, yarn over the next one, pull through. Do you see five loops? Absolutely, pull through all five. I'll show you one more time. So four in a row, so we have one, two, three, and four. And then the next two are together. Now, when you go all the way around, the last stitch should be this together stitch, but if it's not, just fake it. So a lot of us do it, so don't think that we don't. So let's continue, four in a row, two together, four in a row, two together, and I'll be right back in a moment. So let's go through, and I've got my four in a row, the last two stitches, which are right here, are the two together. That's not a stitch right here, so don't think that it is. If, for example, you only had one stitch here, and you still had to do two together, just put in one single crochet, and then finish it. The goal is, is that these two have to become together as one, but if there's only one stitch left before the join, just put in a single crochet because that still equals one. So just putting the last two together, I don't have an issue with my count at the moment, but if it did, that's what I would do. And then pull through and then join to the top of the very beginning single crochet. And we're going to move up to the second round and we're still shaping the top of the hat next. So the reduction is just going to keep on going in and so we're gonna start with the next round. So chain two does not count as a stitch and you're going to half double crochet in this one plus the next two so there's three in a row. So starting in the first one, we have one, two, and three. And then we put the next two together. So this time there's only three in a row that are on their own. So starting in the next one, starting with three, uh, put three. So one, two, and three. And then put the next two together. So I want you to do that for round number two of shaping the top of the hat. And I'll see you at the end of the round. At the end of the round, the last two are together and that's just keeping the stitch count so there's nothing special and then you're just going to join it to the top of the first half double crochet you started with. And we're going to move on to round number three in a second. Round number three, chain two and we're gonna continue the reduction again. So you're gonna half double crochet in the first one and the next one. So there's two in a row this time and then the next two are together. Okay, so the repeat on this round is that there's gonna be two on its own. So one and two and then the next two are together. And please do that all the way around. This is round number three and I'll be right back in a moment.
the end of row number three, the last two are together. And that's just keeping the right counts and then just join to the first half double crochet. So two more rounds left and then your hat's complete. And then we're going to move on to round number four in a moment. And round number four, chain up two. It's not your first half double crochet, it's just a builder. And you'll half double crochet in the first one. This is be a really quick round and the next two are together. Okay, so the next one is one by itself. And then the next one are two together. Please do that all the way around for round number four. So coming up all the way around in round number four, put the last two together. Join it. And do round number five and it's the last round of them all. Let's begin that next. In round number five you're gonna just do half double crochet two together. So just chain up your two and then just starting with the first one just start building and put two together immediately. So there's no uh, ones on its own. So starting in the next two put those together and do that all the way around and this is round number five and the conclusion. But we'll be right back because we still have to seal the top of the hat in a moment and I'll be right back. So I'm coming to the last one. It's a two together because that's what all the stitches were and you're going to join it. Now here's the thing when you finish this hat. You're gonna be left with a hole in the top. So we wanna finish that hole. So you wanna do a long enough strand from your ogo and you're gonna pull that through. Now get your tapestry needle out because you've already been using it and put that on. And our goal is to do like a closed line pull shut. So there's the hole. So just start collecting all of them but do not pull it tight until you get all the way around. And just collect each one of the stitches. And there's a total of nine of them if you're counting it. And it, honestly it really doesn't matter at this point. And I'm just going around those stitches I have this <laughs> fascination when I pull this. I love to see the hole all close at the same time and I think it's more even if you wait until the end too. So going all the way around. Okay and once you do that you can pull on it and it will pull that shut. So just don't be scared to pull on it. Now to finish this off you're just going to go and you're gonna go completely opposite to each other. So yeah, this is where it comes out so just go opposite and then cross it over like this. And then stick it down through the center of the hole to the inside of the hat. And I've got my hand in behind. Don't stab yourself and you wanna pull it through. Now what you're going to do is that you're going to have it so it ties itself into a knot on the back side here. And then you're just going to just weave it on this side. Don't let that needle hit the other side and you're gonna go back and forth a total of three times. So we're going to move on to the pom-pom next. The pom-pom can either be done by hand or if you have a pom-pom uh, a maker. I love my yarn tools. So I'm gonna be showing you a pom-pom maker. It's still in the package. I've never used it before so we'll, <laughs> we'll figure out how to use it together. And this is the hat. So if you would like not to do a pom-pom then you're done. And see you got the complete color play going on in the hat. So it's been strategized instead of letting it just come out of the ogo as is. And it's amazing. So it looks like it's a, they would call that yarn dipping. So it looks like almost like candle that you've been dipping. So let's move on to the pom pom next and let's begin our journey with that. You can do it by hand but I am going to use a tool today. There are so this is the pom pom maker. You can use your hand but I like my, my yarn tools and this is a two piece unit and will go together. There are different styles of pom pom makers but all you can just do to get yourself started is that you're going to put the two and just hold it together. Now the, there's different sizes of these so the bigger the size the bigger the pom pom. And all you're just going to do then is just wrap the yarn around the tool and once you wrap it a few times it'll stay together without any worry at all. So don't worry about any loose strands or anything at this point. If you wanna change colors or use multis that's up to you. But I'm just using the same color 
in, that is in the Oko. So this is the color I haven't used yet which is the white and you want to generously wrap until this is nice and fluffy before jumping to the other side. So let me do that and I'll be right back in a second. So there we go and if you want it more fluffier keep on wrapping and if you're ready to jump then just don't uh, trim your yarn just immediately jump to the other side and start wrapping. I like to wrap the whole piece across first and therefore it'll stay together and then just keep on wrapping to make it look as similar as the original side right here. Once you're done wrapping it and you think it looks pretty good you're just going to close the tool and lift up these locks and put the locks back down and now it's completely closed. All you're going to do is take your scissors and right where the separation is between the tools is where you're going to cut. And then keep on rotating it around. So the locks are holding this tool from reopening. Now grab in the same color and create and make it a little bit generous the strand. You want to put it through the, the slot straight on in. And you're going to tie a knot and let that knot go in between the tool down. Don't be afraid to tug on it and then turn it upside down and do the other side. So I'm only doing half knots if you just noticed. And then I turn it over again. And so I do this a total of three times. So this is the third time and this time I will literally put in the knot. Now I can open the tool. So, use, so just grabbing the two long strands. It's obvious which ones those are. You're just going to open it and release your pom pom. Now your pom pom is not going to be shaped pretty but give it a good shake and then all you're just going to do then is take your scissors and just start shaping. Don't be afraid to cut it down. A lot of the pom poms that you see on projects like Yarn Inspirations are well manicured. So they take their time actually making the pom pom. So they don't just put it through the tool and then slap it on. They actually do shape it and get it more uniform. So just shake uh, just shake your ball once in a while. Make sure all those strands are popping out. And once you're satisfied with the shaping of it, we're going to attach it to the hat. Okay, once you think it's good enough, just clean off your table and we're going to bring our hat back and we're going to secure this with the bow tie to the top of the hat. So give your Give your pom-pom a good shake pre preferably over a garbage can and get all those fluff out and we're going to attach to the hat next. So what we want to do is that we want to go with the two strands. It's really long at this point but that's okay. It's better to be long than it is to be too short and we want to stick our crochet hook on the inside of the hat coming to one side of the top close here. So there's the middle. So we want to come to the one side of that if you go right down the middle it's not going to tie down. So you're just going to go in and you're going to pull that through. Use your fingers and then the other one just go directly across. Now if you plan on washing your hat I'm about to show you a technique that is done and if you do any craft shows not everybody likes pom poms for whatever reason. Um, I love pom poms but that's just me. So once you have it done pull tight to the top and let's turn this inside out. So if you go to a craft show and somebody's uh, complaining they don't want the pom pom and you've tied it on permanently you know you can trim it off but then it's a waste. But what people do is they tr put the inside here and they tie it into a bow tie. And so if they ever want to wash the hat they can undo the bow tie and then just release the pom pom, wash the hat and then put the pom pom back on at the end. So you just want to trim it long enough and my stitch marker is still here from the inside here and therefore you would have this beautiful hat and just give it a good shake 
and uh, that's it for today. So this is the beginner's crochet hat. It's actually really neat. We did color play today. We learned how to crochet and hopefully you have a beautiful hat at the same time. Have a good one and we hope to see you again really soon right here on the Inspirations. and you can always count on us for always these free patterns and tutorials. Have a good day. Bye bye.